time for a year-end mail clean-out. And I have a bunch of semiconductors that I ordered over the past year. Some for projects I never got around to. I believe these would be TVS diodes, some kind of surge suppression. I think the 18 and 30 refer to maybe whatever voltage they can help clamp to. So I was using that sort of thing back when I was working on telephone line simulator stuff. So if there happens to be any voltage spikes on that kind of a telephone circuit, this would help clamp it to a maximum level. This is a 4.7 volt Zener diode surface mount. So most likely I was looking to, again, clamp any signals maybe in a 5 volt circuit. Whether it's audio signals, I don't want to go beyond a certain maximum. I tend to collect Zeners that can help me make things stay within either a 3.3 or a 5 volt max level. So this was probably restocking, but I can't remember exactly what I was going to do with this. And a hundred pieces of BAT46 diode. SOD123 little surface mount package. So these are 100 volt, 150 milliamp shot key diodes. I think I was using this sort of thing in guitar overdrive and distortion clipping op amp circuits. So I have a lot of these on hand now if I want to make a board. Here is a 2.54 millimeter pitch, three row 40 long female header. So we have three rows and these are just standard 0.1 inch headers. I don't know when I'll get back into console video game experiments, but on the back of TurboGrafx-16, there's an expansion port with three rows. This is not the perfect connector for it, but I can cut it to size. Then I can access audio signals, video signals, power ground, and some other miscellaneous control signals if I need. So if that's cut down to the right length, that can just go into a standard PCB and I can just make connections. 50 pieces ABS-10, 1 amp, 1000 volt, surface mount, bridge rectifier. So I just wanted some of these on hand. Maybe I can take an old power transformer and use bridge rectifiers like this and then adjustable or fixed linear voltage regulators to make various clean power supplies for anything that I don't want to use a switching supply. I think this is the most recent thing I ordered. Five meter roll of cable ties, hook and loop. Is this one wide roll or are there multiples? Because I don't think I ordered a wide roll. No, there's several rolls. Okay, good. It just looks like one solid piece until you get up close there because I want these for custom cut length cable ties so just cut this to whatever length because I keep going through all of the old bins of things cables it's a lot better if I can just bundle them all properly and I've gone through a lot of these so I needed more material and while I have this cable out. I ordered more of these dual quarter inch to single mono quarter inch plugs. I have a similar one already except that's for RCA because I'm always needing to either expand what I'm working on and split audio pads or adapt between different kinds of plugs. So for example if I have an audio output, maybe it's from a guitar effect, I can plug one of these in, then put one cable over to a speaker and another one directly to some audio recording device so I can get better quality recordings while hearing what's going on live or any other number of reasons to split a signal. Another one of those bundle choice orders I think I was ordering more stuff like these little splitters where it's a couple of dollars to make up the minimum order for the 
free shipping. Those are stereo instead of mono. There's another set of mono just like those. And there's a stereo 1 8 inch, two female to one male, and a multi 8 inch breakout hub and a little cable. And here's a couple of things I think I might have ordered in 2024. Oh yeah, because these were in another male Q plastic bin that I forgot about. I don't even know what this is. Here I have five D-sub 9-pin male PCB connectors. Can't remember exactly what I wanted them for. It could be video game related, like old Atari joysticks. I think used this. And this I might have ordered a couple of years ago. So that opens up. And if you have a metal edge or even a plastic edge that you want to put trim on, you can just work that on and it grips back down or you can somehow glue it. Just as an example, if you wanted to put a finished edge on this PCB for some reason, you just put that on, cut it to length, and it grips on there and gives a better, safer edge. So it'll go into inventory. And another bag of bags. This was ordered recently, I think maybe around Black Friday. I don't know if anything in here has labels with information. I'll have to see as I go. So a bunch of resistors, 600 pieces, 30 different values of quarter watt, 1% metal film. You can always use consumable parts like this. So I think I was trying to, again, make up minimum orders. I'm just going to take all this out and if there's any shipping labels, I'll darken those. So I know I have several LEDs, 100 pieces, five millimeter size, red and green with three terminals. So there's going to be a common and then a dedicated red and green as opposed to just two terminals and it's red one way, green the other. Looks like it's common anode so there's green and red i think i saw a lot of this stuff for the extra cheap price when you go into that bundle deal thing and you get lost in those menus where you have to pick three items to get free shipping and you end up getting 20 items nine volt battery connectors it's been a long time since i bought these so i've been using some older ones for example here I put a DuPont style female jack on here so I can plug wires in and put things on a breadboard. But every so often I find I go to remove it from a battery and it kind of breaks. So I thought I should have more. More LEDs, 100 pieces, five millimeter assorted color, a miniature, I guess I would call framing square. They call it a stainless steel square, 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 square. So I got this again on a bundle deal for a couple of dollars. And the reason, sometimes your other square is too big and the smallest you have is too big. And sometimes you just need to see if a relatively small item is true, especially when you have to put this inside if you're making a little box and you only have so much space. So if you're trying to put a box together, you want to check if you are square. And at least according to this, probably can't show it on camera, but the inside here looks square and the outside looks square. So at least for a small hobby project, that'll do. And this little mallet or hammer thing, they call it guitar rubber hammer accessories, electric guitar bass rubber fret hammer wire replacement tool for luthier. Extra protective packaging here. It's supposed to, I think, be rubber on one side, plastic on the other. The main thing they're marketing it for is guitar fret work, where you may want to be able to hammer on something, but not metal on metal wire frets. And I had to get it based on the features because not only is it earthquake resistant, it's also explosion proof. So I had to have it just in case. 
and another guitar tuner, the kind that you clip onto the headstock and it picks up vibrations when you make a sound on the instrument. Does not come with a battery, I'll have to find one, but you clip that on and then it will have the display showing the tuning of the string or whatever you're doing. And I've got these all over the place, including I wanted something here at the workbench for when I do those little experiments and I need to check the tuning. I've never compared them against any sort of more expensive tuner, but at least it's good enough to get you in tune with yourself on the same instrument. So I think I got that for maybe three something dollars and I couldn't resist getting this analog delay effect pedal. I don't know if I need instructions, but there's specs like power consumption, input and output impedance. I also think I got this on Black Friday and I only paid $11 and something. So we have our on off switch, delay time, the mix with the original sound and the delayed effect. So how prominent is the delay? And repeat. I believe would be a feedback control for how long the delay at this rate, whether it's fast or slow repeats, how long are they going to keep repeating before they die out? So of course I want to just quickly hook that up and try it out. Now I'm wondering, considering the low cost, I just want to try it out on a bigger amplifier setup and just see is there any noise or anything that comes out when you have a bigger speaker. But in the meantime, that was a successful Black Friday shopping spree along with discovering some items ordered longer ago that were misplaced in another bin. Thanks to supporters of the channel for helping make this possible. Yeah. <laughs>